In January of 1877, Fred Francis Bosworth was born in Utica, Nebraska. He became a Christian in 1894 after attending a revival meeting in Omaha, Nebraska. During his lifetime, he was a well-known preacher and evangelist. Bosworth is best known for his book on divine healing known as Christ the Healer, which is still in print today. What many do not know is F.F. Bosworth was a strong believer and teacher of the Anglo-Israel message, stating that the Anglo-Saxon, Celtic, Germanic, and Scandinavian and kindred peoples of Europe are the descendants of the Israelites of the Bible. Instead of the modern-day Judeo-Christian belief that the modern-day Jewish people are Israel. In the late 1800s, Bosworth and his wife received a newsletter titled Leaves of Healing from John Alexander Dowie. Dowie was also a believer and teacher in the Anglo-Israel message, writing about it often in his Leaves of Healing newsletter that went worldwide. Dowie had founded the city of Zion, Illinois, at the time called Zion City. The city was set up as a Christian theocratic government where modern drugs were banned, Bible food laws were practiced, and only faith healing was allowed other than setting of bones and other similar practices. Bosworth and his wife, after reading this newsletter, packed up and moved to Zion, Illinois, like many did in those days. After moving there, he became band director of the church where Dowie preached. While in Zion, Bosworth met several other believers in the Anglo-Israel message, one being John G. Lake, another evangelist of that time, who he became close friends with. Bosworth left Zion City in the early 1900s and became involved in the early Pentecostal movement that was started by Charles Parham, who was also a believer in the Anglo-Israel message. It is unclear when Bosworth first started to believe in the Anglo-Israel message, but it is very probable that he first heard it in Zion City from Dowie in the late 1800s. During the 1930s, Bosworth became involved with the Anglo-Saxon Federation of America, which was organized by Howard B. Rand, who was a Massachusetts lawyer, an inventor, and three-time candidate for the Massachusetts State Office on the Prohibition Party ticket and author of many books on Anglo-Israel. Howard Ram was also the editor of a national magazine called Destiny, which was published monthly from 1937 to 1968. This magazine is not to be confused with the modern-day magazine called Destiny about black culture. During the 1930s and 1940s, Bosworth wrote for Destiny magazine and spoke at many Anglo-Israel conferences. During this time, Bosworth had a radio program where he promoted the gospel of Jesus Christ along with the Anglo-Israel message, even handing over the microphone to Howard Rand Weekly to help promote the message and the Anglo-Saxon Federation of America. In one radio program by Bosworth titled The Bible Distinction Between the House of Israel and the House of Judah, he said these words, quote, Thousands of Christians use the term Israel and Jew and the house of Israel and the house of Judah, employing these in similar words and phrases as if they were always referred to the same people. They do not know that according to biblical history, there were no Jews known as such until 15 centuries after Abraham was born and until 600 years after the death of Moses. End quote. Now, I want to make a quick note. Of course, when he says Jews, he is speaking of Judeans in the Bible, or Judahites, not the modern-day Jews of today. I also want to quote another section later on in that message as well, where he says this, quote, The Anglo-Saxon nations are Isaac's sons, or Saxons, but they are not Jews. Only one of the twelve tribes are descendants of Judah. The promise of multitude of nations was made to Ephraim, not to Judah, end quote. This radio program later went on to be published in a booklet and is said to have had over 100,000 printed during that time. 
It is often still published today from different ministries, and you can read the entire radio broadcast sermon in the description below. There are some who say that F.F. F. Bosworth recanted his belief in the Anglo-Israel message later in life, but none of them offer any kind of documentation for this claim. And those that knew him at the time that also believed the Anglo-Israel message said that he firmly believed in it still up to his death. So why is this important, you may ask? Well, it's important because we need to know that the Anglo-Israel message, that the Anglo-Saxon, Germanic, and Scandinavian, and Celtic, and kindred people are the Israel people of the Bible, that this belief was not held by some backwood cult in the middle of nowhere, back in the forest, but was a prominent doctrine among many famous and well-known evangelical preachers and teachers and authors during the 1800s and 1900s and even before that. The Anglo-Israel message is significant for this one fact here. It is a doctrine and a belief that has crossed and pierces across denominational lines, whether it be Pentecostal, Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, Episcopal, you can find preachers all throughout history that hold all these titles of denominationalism. Yet, they will hold the belief that Anglo-Israel truth is true. This is significant. This is proof that this is not a denominational doctrine. That there isn't a denomination of Anglo-Israel. But it is a belief that crosses and pierces across those denominational lines. It needs to be looked at today. So I invite you to look into the Anglo-Israel truth for yourself and find out whether it's true or not and ask yourself if these prominent men and women that we're going to discuss in this series, if they believed it, why did they believe it? And maybe, just maybe, since it crossed denominational lines the way it did with so many prominent, famous evangelical preachers and authors, maybe there's something to it. And maybe it's been censored and labeled because often truth is censored and labeled and we see that more today than ever before thank you for watching